Let's make no mistake here. Fly tying is a different hobby from fly fishing. If all I wanted to do was go and catch some fish, I could tie some very effective flies for still water and flowing water and get plenty of fish. No, fly tying is about creating something that as well as catching a few fish, will also catch a few anglers. We all started somewhere with uh, fly tying. You might have bought a small kit, you might have been given a vice, but we all started somewhere. And uh, it can become very, very addictive. In fact, fly tying can cost you as much money as fishing itself. Now I'm going to take it as read that you've already got a fly tying vice that you're happy with. So what we're going to explore today is five tools that are going to increase your enjoyment of tying and improve your fly tying. So without further ado, let's get into it. So let's jump straight in with number one. Scissors. Now, you can get lots of different scissors and you can pay lots of different money. You may think that uh, a set of scissors is a set of scissors is a set of scissors. Uh, that's not the case. Uh, you can buy a pair of nail scissors from Boots that will probably do a job for you for a while, but um, you'll soon get pretty fed up with them blunting. Now, I've started to tie more and more with nano silks and they blunt scissors really quickly. So I've picked up a set of these. They've got serrated edges uh, and I use these primarily for cutting nano silk and other bits and bobs. They're, they're good scissors. The, the reason these ones are black is they're resistant to super glue and resins, which I use quite a bit of, and uh, I like to keep my kit nice and tidy. So that's why I've got these. They, they were fairly expensive. The other scissors that I have are some straight edged, um, long pointed scissors, and I use these for deer hair. Um, and that's about it. Only deer hair and things where I need a straight cut. Really good. I also have um, an old set of scissors. So these, basically, what I do is when I get a new set, after two or three years, they become an old set because the scissors don't last forever. So the old set, they're for stripping off um, hooks where I've tied a fly that I'm not happy with. I can use the old sets to trip away the hooks. I also use these for foam. Never use good scissors on foam. It will blunt them quicker than running it up and down the side of a file. Scissors. So, very important. If you uh, invest in good scissors, it will serve you well at the vice and it will improve your tying. There's nothing worse than cutting your raggedy end away and it's still fuzzled up and uh, makes the fly look untidy. So that's number one. Number two then, bobbin holders. Very personal thing. And you will be absolutely amazed at how much money you'll spend on bobbin holders. Now, uh, one bobbin holder will do you. And if I was to only have one bobbin holder, what I would have is this one. Uh, this is the TMCO. It's not particularly expensive. I think they're between 12 and 15 pounds. Uh, and you just remove your thread from your bobbin holder and you put in your next thread. But if you are anything like me, uh, you'll have an array of bobbin holders. Now I've got all different types. Uh, I don't, what I don't have actually, and is a really, really expensive one. Um, this is probably the most expensive one I own. And the only reason I have it is my wife bought me a CNF travel kit uh, many, many years ago. Now the jaws on that CNF vice have been worn out but the bobbin's still going strong, and I quite like this bobbin. It's not my favourite, as I said. That TMCO bobbin is uh, as good a bobbin as I've found anywhere. I've not tried the 60, 70 pound bobbins. I just don't see the benefit from that. As long as it holds the thread and the tension feels right, it, it does a job for me. But get happy with your bobbin holder. It's going to be in your hand a long time and it is a really important tool. So what I would suggest is if you go to any shows or you're in any shops, play with a few. Ask, ask the guy to give you a shot on the vice. 
tying with a bobbin holder. Make sure they're a ceramic tube because what you don't want, I get a lot of questions actually on the channel saying my thread is always snapping and generally it's because you've got a poor bobbin holder and it's snapping your thread as you're working. So it's not, it's not fine and plastic or ceramic and it just snaps your thread. So key, you'll start to pick up and for when you find one you like, buy three or four because then you can have the primary colours that you use for your tying all in different bobbins and you're not having to switch out the, the bobbin every time you, you fancy changing colours of thread. Number three then, dubbin brushes. Now, uh, for a very, very long time I used a lollipop stick and a little bit of Velcro that was just super glued onto the stick and it, and it served me really well over the years. But um, in recent years, I've been using one of these ones. Now this is uh, from Stoneflow. It's got a little comb at the end, which is great for brushing out the deer hair and stuff. And it's, it's quite a thin bottom and it's got a Velcro strip on the top. Now I don't know how well you can see that. If I hold it right up to the camera, it might focus in. No, it's not going to do it. But basically I've worn the Velcro out on this one and I liked it so much I've just recently bought a brand new one and the Velcro's all nice and new and shiny. So I'll be uh, getting that roughed up later on. Again, uh, you can spend quite a bit of money on dubbing brushes. Uh, I don't see the point. Uh, go to your local haberdashery, give your kid a lollipop for as a treat, save the stick and stick a bit of Velcro on if that's uh, what you want. If you're not um, doing a lot of deer hair work, you don't need the comb. The little bit of Velcro does the job. Now I have got a, a heavier wire brush for, for stuff, but again, I went to a cheap pound shop and picked that up. I think, it well, it was a pound. <laughs> so dubbing brushes, make sure you've got one. It's, uh, it is is essential when you start working with um, dubbing such as the scruffy dubbing, things you just might want to tease out seals for really does help and it's better than sitting with a bodkin needle which I'll be coming on to next. Number four then, bodkin needles. Again, uh, when you go to the uh, British Fly Fishing Fair, uh, we didn't go this year, but when you do go, you'll see some of the tires with custom bodkin needles. Uh, they've been made ivory, deers, you know, there's all different kinds. This one, again, it's a very simple affair. It's just a metal, I think it was about a fiver, this actually. And uh, it's not particularly sharp, but I like these and I've got three of them. Uh, one of them I've sharpened to a really fine point. And the reason for that is I do a lot of split thread work for dubbing loops. And I just find the sharpened point on this bodkin needle splits the thread no problem for me. Now, the other one I've got is for general use for picking out materials and other stuff. And I have a third one, exactly the same. And I use that for applying super glue or resins. Sometimes your bodkin needle, if you're using glues and resins, can get gunked up quite badly. And the way to clean them is get yourself a lighter and a wire brush from the pound shop. Costs a pound. And then you simply burn off the worst of the residue and then run the needle into your wire brush. Give it a little twist and it's good as new. So three bodkin needles might seem a bit excessive to most, but if you do a lot of tying, you'll find that you need the three different uh, needles and it just be disciplined about how you're using them so that you don't um, waste them. Another way of doing it, of course, and a way I've done for many, many years, was a doweling rod and a darning needle. So put a little hole in the doweling rod, darning needle in, and that served me for 10, 15 years. And it's only because I'm doing the YouTube channel and I don't want to seem a bit skinflint by not buying a bodkin needle and they're so cheap, why wouldn't you? Number five then, uh, and this, it makes me smile, a whip finish tool. Um, I've been fly tying for about 30 years and up until last year, 
I could not use a whip finish tool and uh, I sincerely mean that. Uh, some people thought it was a bit of an ongoing joke that I used to use this all the time but that's simply not the case. I could not get on with them. I've owned at least 10 whip finish tools over the years and they've either been thrown across a room and lost or they've been bent out of shape and thrown in the bin because I just could not get to grips with them. I just used to use my fingers and it served me well. But since starting the YouTube channel, I want to show people best practice and best practice is definitely a whip finish. Don't be like me, don't wait. Learn how to use this tool very early on. Now, there's lots of different ones available and what got me converted to this was uh, Dave Downey's video and what I'll do is I'll pop a little link up there in the information bar to that video. And I've watched several videos over the years thinking I've got to get a grips with this tool, never got it. But Dave Downey's video, several, several months of practice and I'm now using the whip finish tool. And I do wonder how I got by without it, to be perfectly honest. Well folks, there's uh, absolutely countless accessories that you can use for fly tying. And over the years, I've started to build up several stuff that I only use every now and again, but um, it's great to have them in your armory, but it's not essential. You've got to pick the really important things first. Get them right and your fly tying will improve. Now, talking about fly tying, if you want to tie two easy flies, they're going to appear on your screen there and there. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please think about clicking that button. I would really appreciate your support. Tight wraps and I'll see you all next time.